I'd like to apologize for this week's TechNet. We lost a portion of the feed due to an Echolink loss. Thanks for your support.
that's not the best antenna one best means what can one person go out with a vehicle and set up by themselves in half an hour out in the field somewhere. So for that, best means either a horizontal dipole or an inverted V about 12 feet off the ground. In our testing, um, when we go out and set up an NVIS antenna, and my focus has been on end-fed random wire antennas because they're easy to set up when one end of the antenna is your vehicle. Um, 12 feet off the ground, and fed random with a tuner. Um, we, when, every time I go out, I can talk to people. Um, and we have talked from one side of the mountain to the other between Pooter Canyon and Big Thompson Canyon. And we've gone out on multiple times into canyons on Sunday mornings when uh, Aries does their HF net and works them every single time. The problem with event communication, like the Colorado Marathon, has been that there's always someone else somewhere on that frequency. So we might try to work NVIS from Poudre Canyon into Fort Collins, and we're hearing the Wyoming trout fishing net that's on that frequency on that day, and by gosh, that's their frequency, and you better get off of it. So that's a problem we've had, but it does work in zero EMP. WA7EM, did you uh, have any evaluation of the so-called dead zone where ground wave got you so far uh, and then it uh, petered out and then uh, the one bounce nevis kicked in further out but there was the dead zone. I know that doesn't align necessarily with the uh, canyons problem and I, I agree with all you said about bouncing over to the intervening mountaintops between the canyons. Go ahead. So the dead zone problem is when you typically have a vertical antenna and you're radiating off at low angle. And you'll have an immediate ground zone that you can cover, and then you'll have a dead zone, and then you'll have your first hop. So the dead zone comes into play with a vertical antenna, typically. Or a, or a beam antenna that's beamed out towards the horizon. You'll have, you'll have the close-in coverage, and then you'll have a dead zone, and then you'll have the, uh, the further out. With NVIS, and we're talking 80 meters, 60 meters, 40 meters, depending on the time of day, Low horizontal antenna, if I set up in Colorado, in northern Colorado, um, this area, Larimer County, I will consistently talk uh, up to Grand Junction, down to Pueblo, Colorado Springs, Denver, up to Cheyenne, Laramie, uh, Wheatland, out to Scott's Bluff and out to uh, uh, western Kansas. Solid coverage, no dead zone. So that is going straight up and coming down into about a 200 mile radius uh, consistently every day, Monday through Friday, twice on Saturdays. Yeah, I agree. That's what the article said. But they pointed out that in the east, underdeveloped parts of the world with the hospital and the ambulance. The hospital can set up the horizontal dipole, as we've talked about, but the ambulance is being mobile. The only practical antenna 
like something really, really complicated is a whip antenna, so that leads to the problem uh, I described, but nobody had a solution for that for the A7EM. NYY. Go ahead, Bert. So, uh, complete agreement with uh, what Mike said. We had a great deal of good time doing that. There are solutions for the mobile end of this antenna. Uh, the military uses them regularly. There's a, there's a couple. There's a laid down whip antenna, but the military whip is not the same as your typical um, um, 108 inch whatever uh, stainless steel whip. It's, it's built a little differently. Those are very expensive, as are, there's a, also a magnetic loop antenna configuration. Now, we haven't tested either of those yet. I'm hoping to test the magnetic loop configuration because that can lay fairly low profile on top of the vehicle. Uh, it's rumored to be able to transmit moderately well in the horizontal, you know, while it's laying flat, but typically it stands up off the roof of the vehicle. Um, um, kind of pivots on one side and stands up vertically. You wouldn't want to drive with it there, but you could deploy it very, very quickly. Um, haven't tested with that yet. One of the points I'd like to note from our testing, when we were using the Invis Canyon to Canyon and Canyon to Flatland, is that the signals we were getting were typically 20 and 30 over S9. You could afford to compromise the antenna badly and still maintain reasonable communications. Um, it was fun testing, and we need to do more of it. Um, we had a couple other guys involved in that as well. I remember we were getting into Greeley and Loveland and Fort Collins from the canyons as well. But generally speaking, with a vertical antenna, yes, that's, that, that zone occurs. But there are other solutions uh, to go and buy them. They're kind of prohibitively expensive. And to build them, there are some things you have to take into consideration. For a magnetic loop antenna, you have extremely high voltages at the tuning capacitor and very narrow bandwidth and very, very high currents in your actual radiator such that soldering doesn't always work. Sometimes it melts. I haven't tried digging. I found out you can take weld copper. Haven't done it yet. but. That'll be coming up soon. Bart, are there commercial companies that make those mag loop antennas, or is it military surplus or make your own? There are companies that produce them. I don't know the names of the companies off the top of my head. I did find them last year when we were doing all this, but I didn't keep good records. It was, it was pretty easy Google search stuff. Yeah, no worries. Google's my friend. Okay, um, any other questions or comments on uh, Ed's Envis topic? Hey, MP. Go ahead, Craig. Yeah, I just wanted to reiterate that um, for our application of trying to do event communications, it was not ideal because there was always somebody else we were fighting for a frequency over. Um, so it always worked, but there was always somebody else in Nebraska or Kansas or Wyoming or something on the frequency. But for emergency communication, where if you are the one in the canyon and you need to talk to somebody, um, it always worked. So that was uh, that was the takeaway there in zero EMP. And then why, why again? Go ahead, Bert. So my very first Invis antenna I set up in the backyard of my house. It was for 40 meters. Uh, a dear friend of mine, Randy, W0AZV, just in peace. He stayed with his nephew in Utah. And he and I talked a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So when he was going to Utah to stay with his nephew, he, he set up an endless antenna four feet off the ground, just a dipole. And I set up an endless antenna eight feet off the ground in my backyard. And under that dipole were three reflector wires that were a couple, four or five feet longer than the dipole itself. 
these wires I wove into the grass in the backyard, one directly under and parallel to the dipole, and then one six feet either side of that, but all parallel. Randy and I were able to talk on 40 meters until sometime around 3.30 in the afternoon, all through the winter, reliable like clockwork. I mean, I don't, we never started really early in the day, but we could always tell in the afternoon at that 3 o'clock time, you'd get a transmission that was warbly, and you knew the next transmission wasn't going to go through. However, using that same antenna, again, eight feet off the ground, and with reflector wires underneath to put as much energy vertical as possible, I also talked to Montana, Texas, Missouri, Baltimore, um, all over the country. Most of my energy was going up, but not all of it. So it's not exclusively an inverse antenna. It's just got more radiation going up uh, because that's considered acceptable for Invis, which is, most hams don't like that. They think they're warming up the clouds and it's a waste of time. Well, if you want long distance, it's not as effective. However, as I said, I still talk all over the country with that 40 meter Invis uh, dipole. And zero and my Y back to that. Comment. Thanks, Bart. And go ahead, comment. Yeah, uh, W0 KJM. Um, I know uh, Marty K0 MLG, uh, as you call, um, uses a uh, random wire uh, almost set up for Envis. It's not very high off the ground. I want to say his is set up at uh, about five or six feet. And Marty is able to uh, DX with that antenna as well as kind of some Envis. Well, mostly Envis, but on some occasions is able to DX with it. So uh, you can kind of do both. Now, yeah, it's not ideal, but sometimes it can get done if the conditions are just right. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, anybody else? Kilo Delta Zero Tango Yankee Uniform with a comment. Hi, Joe. Go ahead. The floor is yours. As you folks know, I tape uh, most of these things, but I actually use Echo Link to do it. And during the middle of this conversation this evening, Echo Link dropped out. We were able to get it back. So when you hear this <laughs> um, little recording, it's going to be split. So I do apologize for those people that are in the middle. So, And nothing else back to that, thanks. And my wife for TYU. Yo, dude. Joe, I was looking on the website, the club website, and I didn't see it. We had a conversation earlier about Arden. Amateur radio emergency something network, I forget. And somebody thought that there had been a club presentation on that. And I went and looked, and I couldn't find it. Uh, do you have any knowledge of that, or can you point me in a direction? As usual, I'll give you a big maybe. <laughs> it was, it's probably in our, our archives, but I doubt very much if we have it on the website, but I'll do some checking and I'll get back to you by tomorrow, I promise. Okay, and if you do find it, would you let me know or send it to me and send it to Ivan W1VAM as well. He was, uh, he was the one that started that whole question, line of question. Thank you. M0NYY, back to net. This is K0AZA, net control for the NCARC Weekly TechNet. Any other late check-ins, additional comments, questions, or other discussion before we close the net this evening? And 0 EMP for kg 0 Even Joe, you still there? Yeah, I'm sorry. I uh, didn't hear anything. I'm doing about three things at once. Uh, did somebody ask something? <laughs> yeah, Joe, and 0 EMP. Uh, it was ARD and Amateur Radio Digital Emergency Network. <clears throat> there was someone that did a physical presentation. He showed up to our club meeting on a Saturday at Golden Corral. This would have been before COVID, so probably about a year before COVID, so 2018 maybe. Um, <clears throat> And I think the guy was out of Denver or Boulder or something like that, and he did a presentation on that uh, topic. Uh, so that's what Bert's looking for, and zero EMP. Yeah, I kind of remember that. He was, um, I think he was out of Boulder. I think you're absolutely right. And he wanted to put 
a repeater up on horse tooth and it just wasn't going to work for us because, well, you know all the complications we have with, with politics at horse tooth. So he didn't want to go anywhere else. So I guess that's where we were at. I remember the guy. I can see his face, but for the life of me, I don't know the presentation. We normally keep those. Uh, we didn't start recording until after COVID, so it wouldn't be anything like that, but I might have some documentation on, on him. Yeah, that's what we're looking for in Zero AMP. Copy that. Okay, thanks. I'll definitely uh, do some research here. Uh, Katie Zip, see you back to that. Anything else before we close the net this evening? Okay, Jam. Go ahead, Kyle. W0KJM. Um, I have recently picked up a adorable little Yesu VX3 teeny, teeny, tiny breast pocket size radio. The only issue is I got it from Japan, and so it is region locked to Japan's frequencies. So there's not a lot of much of anything that I can really do with it uh, over here. I was wondering and hoping that somebody had experienced Mars modding or uh, unlocking this this radio to be able to transmit on uh, our band plan over here. Um, I did as much research as I could on online, and there was some people saying, oh yeah, you can you can do the Mars cap mod by uh, uh, desoldering a, a resistor. Um, there were some people that were saying that you had to do it from software. Nobody really seemed to come to uh, a good agreement on that, so I was wondering and hoping that someone here had maybe some kind of experience on that, or maybe even a lead on a uh, uh, already unlocked or, or uh, an American region uh, Yesu VX3. Anybody going once? My wife. Go, Bart. Hi, well, good to hear you. And I have some familiarity with that radio from like a really long time ago. Uh, Mods.dk. So you use the German website to get the Japanese radio to do the American frequencies. Um, <laughs> if it's not somewhere and at that radio, I don't think it was, it's actually diodes that you remove, and there are four. And one of them is for EU, one of them is for Japan, one is for the U.S., and I can't remember what the fourth one was. But that is all certainly doable. I will get in touch with you, and we'll uh, we'll take that one offline. But I'm pretty I'm I'm 95 percent sure we can take care of that. Fantastic! That's what I wanted to hear. Thank you so much, Bart. And likewise, really good to hear you as well as everybody else uh, on the net tonight. It's great to be back in the land of the living. Thanks, Kyle. And yeah, it's um, mods.dk. They have a whole list of radios over on the right hand side. If you click on the VX-3R. It looks like there's quite a bit of documentation on it. On that note, anything else before we close the net? Hearing nothing, this concludes the NCARC TechNet. Net Control would like to thank each of you for your participation. We had a total of 20 check-ins tonight. This net will occur again next Monday at the same time on this repeater. This is K0AZA closing the net at 1907 and returning the repeater to normal operation. 73, and good night, everyone. This presentation was brought to you by the Northern Colorado Amateur Radio Club. For more information, visit our website, ncarc.net. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.